Well, hello, uh, it's me, Robin Waits. Um, I am the author of uh, this here fine book, Take Your Shot, and also the founder of the Fearless Business Accelerator, which is a uh, program designed for coaches, consultants, freelancers, and the like, anybody really who runs a service client business. And uh, basically what I wanted to do was a very quick, um, hopefully helpful video talking about the three different ways that service client businesses typically tend to grow their business. Uh, so let's dive straight in. I want to keep this short and sweet. Um, literally, it's only going to be probably like three, four, five minutes. It won't be long at all. So um, basically, there are three simple ways to grow a business. These are just ideas. Um, uh, this isn't like a. This isn't going to be like a. Hey, I'm going to give everything away here because I've only got a very short period of time to do it in. So if you're interested and want to know more. Um, let me know. I'll tell you about how you can get hold of a copy of um, Take Your Shot as well uh, towards the end of the, uh, the, the video. Um, this is a um, great little book. It's on Amazon. Um, it's got about 320 reviews now, all positive, I might add, uh, on Amazon. So if you want to know how to get hold of a free copy of that, um, just keep watching this video uh, until the end and I'll let you know. So basically the first way to grow a business is the accountant's favourite. So this is around cutting costs. Um, and I like this cartoon because basically it says, after years of margin improvements, there's nothing left but an empty box. I don't think there's any more we can cost cut. And then the chap at the end says, well, we could phase out the box. So basically there's nothing yet left. In my opinion, cost cutting is a short term measure. Um, and But it doesn't lead to long lasting growth. Um, it kind of brings about a scarcity mindset, which I think is a little bit, um, basically it just creates very slow um, progress within a business, um, if that's all you're focusing on. So there are two other ways. So I'm gonna dive straight into those. So the next one, and this is what I've discovered sort of most business owners are focused on, which is basically to sell more of the same thing, i.e. marketing. So most business owners I know are out there kind of searching for the next new shiny marketing thing, silver bullet, which is gonna save their business, turn their fortunes around, get them all of the clients and everything else. And like fundamentally though, marketing is a bit like rocket fuel. So imagine this little Fiat 500 car, which you can see on the screen in front of you. If you were to add rocket fuel to this car, it would go really fast for a really short period of time and then it would just explode, gone. Um, so in this analogy, the engine, the 500cc engine in a Fiat 500, is a bit like the chassis, the engine that drives your business. Um, and to be more explicit, basically it's around your product and your pricing. So most people don't have an optimized offer um, in terms of the product which they're selling. Um, and they don't really practice their pricing enough. Um, and so I'm going to come on to pricing in a second. Um, so really, if you optimize products and pricing and make your uh, engine run more efficiently, um, marketing becomes less of an important thing. But like I said, like 90% of business owners are out there marketing. This is kind of what they're doing. They're spraying marketing stuff all over prospects. And it's not really conducive to, um, again, to growing a business in my opinion. It's a fairly short term measure. And um, it just, like most people just get marketing wrong and they're just spraying stuff all over their prospects and like buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. And it's just not really working for them. So much better that we can look at the product side of things. And to be fair, like in this day and age as well, there's um, a lot of dissonance in terms of like creating the perfect customer journey. Everybody wants automation and things like that in their business, which is great. It can be achieved. Um, but if you think about it, and I've done this with a room full of people, I've, I've taken them through like four steps to buy a copy of my book off Amazon. And despite the billions of dollars that Amazon have spent on their platform, investing in software development and things like that, pe like some people don't have Kindle on there, just the trust just isn't there, despite the fact I've been invited to speak in front of them. Some people don't have Kindle. Like it, it, It's just... Um, it's just even with the best, perfect, the most perfect customer journey that you could possibly create, um, we still can't sell our products. Okay, so this is why marketing is fundamentally kind of broken. Basically, all of this, all of this marketing kind of like with everybody focusing on mar marketing, just creates a massive tension in the marketplace. Um, creates skepticism, like people are really doubtful of all like the new marketing things that are out there. So eventually this this kind of rope is just going to fray and snap and um really i think what i wanted to talk about was way number three to like how we go about growing a business and this is basically to um sell the same thing but for more money okay 
basically like new prospects in your business, in your coaching business practice, your consultancy, your freelance business, um, they've not been exposed to your pricing before. Um, and probably one of the things that you're most afraid of is um, like putting your prices up is gonna um, push people away from you. But if they've not been exposed to your pricing, um, how do they know what to kind of compare it against? They've got nothing to kind of compare it with, okay? Um, so with new prospects, there's basically less tension and therefore it creates more opportunity. Um, but we've still got to go through a process. It's a three-step process when it comes to pricing your products, pricing your services um, that we go through. So it might be that I could say go and double your product, double your prices, and you'd be like, no, Robin, I couldn't possibly do that. Oh, no, I'll, I'll lose clients, okay? And you'd probably go and speak to like one person and say, oh, I'm thinking about doubling my price, and they'd say, oh, no, that's ridiculous, and you take their word for it, okay? Now, I've worked with enough business owners to know that if you do increase your prices, um, Basically what it does is it gives you bandwidth. It gives you extra time to deliver a better quality product. And then at the end of it, you get paid more money because you create kind of a whole ecosystem around it. Um, and fundamentally, it's kind of a bit like, like think of that inner, this inner circle here actually, of it being like, um, you know, the, it's, I call it the sales cycle of doom. Sell, deliver, sell, deliver, sell, deliver. And I don't know about you, but the definition of success for me is definitely not going round and round in circles. Um, but if we put our prices up a little bit, all of a sudden it's like our universe expands a little bit and we just get a little bit more time, we get a bit more money, a bit more freedom, a bit more autonomy, and we can make sure that we can then deliver a better quality product. Remember that Fiat 500 engine? So we build our, build our engine, make it better, make it run more efficiently and use less fuel, um, make it easier for it to run so we, we reduce the friction um, so that we can it can it can actually um, operate faster and more efficiently in the long term, um, and you can see down the bottom here that if we get this right with our pricing model, we can actually have fewer clients, but earning us more money, which naturally gives us more time. So that's where the opportunity comes from. It is quite a lengthy process. Like I said, it's a three-step process where we sow the seed of the idea around pricing. You've then got to get out there and pitch it to enough people to validate it. So you've got to have lead flow, okay? So I'm not, not neglecting marketing here. You've still got to have leads coming into your business. Um, but again, there's a way of um, attracting the right sorts of prospects into your business and repelling the wrong ones because it's okay for you to say no to a few clients. And also because your pro product's better, your prices are high, you've got to get better at selling. So, um, so in my opinion, selling the same thing for more money or selling fewer of the th same thing i.e. Like, fewer clients but making more money is actually much better for a business than either trying to sell loads more of the same thing or cutting costs. Okay, I told you that I was going to um, show you or tell you about how you can get hold of a free copy of Take Your Shot if you're interested. Um, just head on over to um, fearless.biz. Um, I've got a whole load of free resources. I'll pop a link um, in, in uh, the video next to the video as well. Um, so you can go and um, knock yourself out, go and get hold of a um, request a free copy of Take Your Shot and a couple of the other resources which I've got. Um, and then, like, lean in. If you want to know more, just um, hit me up with a message and I'd love to have a chat with you.